like to introduce Jill Dubbs. Jill is Program Director for Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi for the National Kidney Foundation. She's a great advocate on chronic kidney disease and is here to share information on your kidneys and you. Jill? Hi, thank you, Libby, um, and good morning. I'm so glad to be here today to talk to you about your kidneys and kidney disease and why we should all be thinking about it and it should be on our healthcare radar. So just a little bit about us. Um, the National Kidney Foundation is the leading organization in the United States dedicated to the awareness, prevention, and treatment of kidney disease. Um, it, education and awareness is a pivotal part of what we do, and that brings me to this program because it's basically a Kidneys 101 about how to take care of your kidneys, who's at risk for kidneys, kidney disease, and what we can do about it. So we want to know what you think you know about your kidney, kidneys currently. Do you know anyone with kidney disease? Do you know anyone who is on dialysis? Um, do you know anyone who's actually received a, a kidney or donated a kidney? And we're going to skip right past that since we're not doing a poll. So this slide is actually the reason why I wanted to work at the National Kidney Foundation. Um, it really, I had no idea just how prevalent kidney disease was. So this really brought it home. So I definitely want to take a minute to talk about this. So one of the most staggering statistics about kidney disease is that in the United States, one in three adults is at risk for kidney disease. That's actually an incredible number if you think about it. So that's 33% of Americans are at risk for kidney disease. Even more staggering is that one in seven American adults actually currently has kidney disease, but no, most, most of them, around 90%, don't actually know they have it. I mean, the reason for that is because I, I think that the term silent killer is a bit overused, but in this case, um, it's actually true because we typically do not see people diagnosed um, until the later stages of kidney disease. And then we also, um, you don't see those early symptoms um, with, the, with early onset kidney disease like you do in some other chronic diseases. So you could be walking around with this, um, with chronic kidney disease and not even realize that you have it. It is also the ninth leading cause of death in the United States, which when I saw that, I've had people think, well, it's top 10, so that's incredible, but there are other things I should worry about more. So I, I try to, to make this relevant by explaining that kidney disease, where it ranks, is actually incredibly, it is incredibly high on our scale as far as what we should be worried about, but we don't actually have it as part of our healthcare process. So I would actually say to ladies, we do know that when we turn 40, it's time for a mammogram because we are all thinking about breast cancer as well we should. It's something that should be part of our healthcare process. We talk to our doctor about it and it's on our radar. And for the gentlemen out there, I would say the same. When it's time for your prostate exam, we think about prostate cancer. It's affecting a, you know, a growing number of men in America. And this disease actually kills more people every year than both of those diseases. So I would actually wonder how many people who were listening actually know the name of the test that you would get in order to determine if you have kidney disease. And most of you do not. So um, the good news is that this disease is preventable. We can prevent progression of kidney disease by early detection and treatment. It can actually slow or even completely stop the progression. So we added this information about COVID-19 because um, we have seen that people, um, is a, and actually a startling percentage of people who are um, hospitalized for COVID-19 have experienced kidney damage. So what does it mean when you have chronic kidney disease, which also people can refer to as CKD, kidney disease, renal disease, those are all terms to refer to kidney disease. It's what happens is that waste products begin to build up in your body because that's the function of your kidneys. Um, they remove waste. Um, heart and blood vessel problems can, can develop and it actually kind of works as a cycle because you know, those, those actual um, hypertension and issues with the heart can actually cause kidney disease and then your kidney disease can make it harder to control blood pressure, so it works. It just it works as a cycle. So bone disease, anemia, and other complications can occur. And of course, if nothing is done to treat kidney kidney disease, um, people will experience kidney failure and then, without treatment, death. So we want to know if people in the audience are in the 33%. So to answer that question, do you have diabetes or prediabetes? you have high blood pressure or take medicine to control your blood pressure. Those are the two leading causes of kidney disease. And if you think about 
how many Americans are affected by one or both of those, is, it's no surprise that so many people are at risk for kidney disease, since, again, those are the number one and number two causes, diabetes and high blood pressure. Are you over the age of 60? Because we do see that kidney function diminishes with age, so we do say if you're over 60, you're considered at higher risk. Um, do you have heart disease or heart failure or a family member with kidney disease? Did you have a parent or grandparent or a sibling, any family member who's been on dialysis or gotten a kidney transplant? And are you overweight or obese? Those are the biggest risk factors. So the two leading causes, again, diabetes and high blood pressure. And if you look at those numbers, more than 100 million Americans have diabetes, which is the leading cause of kidney disease. So, and I've actually heard nephrologists say that when you're diagnosed with diabetes, the conversation about chronic kidney disease should also be had as well. And that's a bit overwhelming to think about, but it's, uh, that, that is what I have been told because it is so connected to kidney disease. One in five adults with high blood pressure may also have kidney disease, which is the second leading cause of kidney failure. So all this is really scary, but there are things that you can do. So 90% of kidney disease, you know, people with kidney disease do not realize that they have it. Um, because those symptoms, those physical symptoms, people ask me all the time, um, will I have pain? Would I feel it? Like if, if there's um, there's no acute pain or chronic issues that are, are associated with um, the onset of kidney disease. So we typically don't see a lot of physical symptoms in the beginning. So getting screened is absolutely imperative to prevent kidney failure. So there are two tests um, that help with early diagnosis, which is of course the key to managing kidney disease and to help slow it or even prevent progression. And the first one of those is, um, oh, actually we're seeing the results of the poll. Um, the first one of those is the urine test, which is called an ACR test. It's the albumin to creatinine ratio. So all you need to know is ACR. It's a urine test um, to help check for CKD, so it's looking for the presence of a protein in your urine. And then the second test, which is the test that I believe that if you're going to your physician, you should be asking about, which is GFR. It's glomerular filtration rate. It uses the creatinine levels in your blood to measure your kidney function, function. So it basically is going to tell your doctor how well your kidneys are filtering your blood. So I definitely would say if you're going in for a physical every year and you're getting that test, then we would just assume everything is okay. But I would implore you to actually speak with your doctor about it. So many times we just actually expect that if we don't hear anything, that, whole, that old adage of no news is good news. But in this case, because kidney disease has stages, we definitely want you to speak to your physician about it, especially if you are finding yourself in one of the risk categories, the high risk categories, because you're going to want to know. I always say it, you can look at it like a red light. I don't want to find out when I'm in a yellow or a red. I want to know when I'm green, yellow. <laughs> so I need to be able to, you know, I need to be monitoring this and speaking with my doctor about it. So please, when you do, if you do get an annual physical, make sure you're asking your physician about that GFR result. And if you are getting it, if not, you definitely want to get that. And then also you wanna speak with your physician about your results. Don't wait to hear from them. That's, if you learn nothing from today except GFR and also to speak with your physician because it is completely up to you to own your healthcare and to make sure that your kidneys are functioning properly. So if kidney disease is not treated, of course, we have, it's called end-stage in, in kidney disease. It means your kidneys are too damaged to function properly on their own, and they can no longer keep you alive. So 85 to 90% of your kidney function would be gone. That's what we would call end-stage kidney disease. Um, people with kidney failure actually require um, another treatment to live, and the two treatments are dialysis or transplant. And I think that surprises a lot of people uh, that transplant is considered a treatment and not a cure, and that's a common misconception, and that is because transplants, um, typically they're not, they don't last forever, so it is considered a treatment and is something that definitely does need to be maintained. So we definitely, um, we, we definitely are, are very um, adamant that people can, you know, pursue transplant, but it definitely is considered a treatment. So we did want to add some information because we've gotten um, a lot of questions about COVID-19 and kidney failure. So people with kidney disease are at a higher risk of severe COVID-19 infection. So we have seen um, people who are patients um, and even transplant recipients um, are definitely um, going to have to shelter in place considering that they um, are at much higher risk of having severe complications or death as an outcome of COVID-19 infection. Um, people um, on dialysis um, and having those transplants, again, appear to be at the high, highest risk. 
And it actually, we were saying what I mentioned earlier, the severe COVID-19 infection can impact kidney disease. So acute kidney injury was found in around 15% of hospitalized COVID-19 patients, which is actually pretty astounding. Um, most people who develop acute kidney injury recover, but it can increase your risk of developing CKD later. So let's talk about who is at higher risk. So we talked about diabetes and high blood pressure being the two leading causes, but this slide actually lets you know who is actually, what groups are at greater risk. So in the United States, African Americans are about three times more likely to develop kidney failure. The Hispanic and Latino population is actually one and a half times more likely, and then followed by that are American, Indian, Asian, and Pacific Islanders who are at an elevated risk as well. So, Jimmy, this is yeah. we, have, we have a question for you, and I know you wanted to answer them as they came up. So how likely, how likely is it that people who end up on dialysis can get off of the treatment without getting a, I mean, a kidney transplant? So there are cases where you can actually reverse it, like we were discussing. You, I mean, we do talk about how you can slow or even pre prevent progression. Um, and when I actually, it's a great question. When I first started working here, I actually was completely unaware that someone can actually come off of dialysis, but we definitely don't want it to look, you know, that that's the standard because that is not typical. Um, we don't, you know, the, the vast majority of patients who are diagnosed with end-stage renal um, failure or end-stage kidney failure um, typically require dialysis or um, transplant as a treatment. Um, but I have read about cases where people were able to um, reverse their kidney disease from the point of actually needing dialysis to coming off of it. But at long-term, I'm not, you know, there was, it was still ongoing, so I'm not sure how long that would last or if it could be maintained indefinitely. But that's a great question. Anything else or you want me to keep, I'll keep going. <laughs> that was all for now, keep going, thank you. Okay, so I use this slide to talk to people because it is so important that we understand the economic impact of kidney disease. I've had this conversation with, with various groups of people that I've had the privilege of sharing it with. And there are some, um, some audiences who I guess come into this and they've told me they weren't sure how this was going to impact them, that they weren't, they didn't really feel like that was something they needed to think about. They had no idea how many people were at risk. Um, and then I always talk to people who, even if you think that you're not at risk for any of these things, um, it's affecting every single person in America. And this slide explains all of that um, because we're all paying for it. Um, it, we're actually paying for it literally and out of pocket because kidney disease represents over 30% of Medicare spending. That's incredible. Like when you think about the actual cost of kidney disease in this country. And so that's one of the reasons why this um, program is so important because even just basic understanding and education about kidney disease and what you can do about it um, can change that and can make an impact on that. So if you look at the slide, if you see that number, it's actually $84 billion to take care of patients with CKD. So but it tells you here, how do you reduce that cost? And it's by prevention. You know, people with, um, who are at risk, letting them know. Um, and so it's all about education. And that's a powerful thing because even just simple information about what tests you should be having, like we're talking about today, or what you should be doing to follow up about that. Don't wait for your doctor to talk to you about it. Ask about your results. Because so often I get asked, you know, what, what is a good number? <laughs> what do I need? What is a good percentage of function? And the truth is it actually depends on you. It depends on your age, of any risk factors. And, and there are, uh, you know, that's something, that's a conversation you should have with your doctor. And we definitely need to remember that they're there to help us have an understanding of our health. Um, and this slide is a, is a good representation about how that's not, um, that, that lack of education and awareness um, is impacting all of us. So what can you do? So again, the number one thing that I recommend, obviously, and then I, you know, on behalf of NKF is get tested. So if you even have one risk factor, and quite frankly, even if you don't, um, just definitely for, for kidney disease, you should definitely get tested. Um, and we've been kind of showing this minute for your kidneys, the highlighted, and I'll go back to that at the end, um, because there's something really neat that we're able to do with that um, today. So um, the second thing is control your risk. So we talked about diabetes and high blood pressure being the leading causes of kidney disease. So make sure that if you are, if you are, if you have diabetes or if you have prediabetes, that you keep your blood sugar and blood pressure under control. Same with blood pressure, that hypertension. Make sure you're controlling it um, because that is the, again, those are the leading causes of kidney disease. Some of these other things you guys already know. 
We're going to eat healthy, drink lots of water. You're going to want to eat fruits and vegetables, limit your salt intake. And it says on here, consider a DASH diet, <laughs> or Mediterranean diet, as a healthy eating pattern to follow. I'm just going to put it out there that one of the biggest things that I have learned in talking to people over the years and, and through this presentation is that you should learn what your what we would call your own vices are. So if your vice is uh, soda or your vice is, you know, um, it, it's something that's high in fat, um, or if it's smoking, you know, then you should probably figure out a way to eliminate that. That's the, one of the best things that you can do just right offhand. Um, and I use myself as an example here because I had no idea that I had any, I had no risk factors. I mean, as far as, um, be, you know, having no issues, um, genetics in my family with uh, diabetes or hypertension. I got very lucky with that. But um, prior to having kids, I was actually pretty terrible um, with my diet. I, I did not have any restrictions. I, if it was deep fried, uh, topped with cheese and coated in ranch, it was the trifecta of love for me. So um, I basically ate whatever I wanted and, and thought nothing of it. I also um, had a little love affair going with a certain sweetened soda beverage that um, will go unnamed today, but um, just suffice it to say, I was consuming way too much um, of things that were very bad for me and had never thought about it because it wasn't on my healthcare radar. Um, I'd never had to talk to anybody about it. And since it wasn't a risk in my family, I just thought that it would be something I never had to think about. And then when I went to have, I got pregnant with my um, first child, I went in for what, um, for ladies who've done this are familiar with the glucose test that you have to take. And I didn't just fail it, I bombed it. It was terrible. Um, and it was so bad that they diagnosed me with gestational diabetes and sent me to a specialist. But I cannot accept that. It was very isolating for me. I had no idea what was going on and no one could really help me because no one in my family had experienced it. Um, and so when I went um, back to my doctor and I did some research, I found obviously that my vices, the same things that we're looking at in these slides, were actually causing me harm without me even knowing it. Um, because I'd have never had a reason to take a look. Um, and so in two and a half weeks, I changed my diet. And I don't advocate eating, you know, boiled chicken and raw vegetables all the time. That's not what we're saying. We're definitely just saying make those adjustments that you know you need to make to your diet that will help you live a healthier lifestyle and reduce your, reduce your risk of kidney disease. But for me, just reducing those things, not even completely cutting them out, made such an enormous difference that I actually went back and, was, and I was able to pass the test and changed my, changed my life completely um, because it really gave me a look. But that's unfortunately what it takes so often is a scare for us to make those changes. So I just wanted to talk today so that we know we don't want to get have to have a big health scare before we make these changes because especially given that chronic, chronic kidney disease um, is so, is such a, it's a scary prospect. So we definitely want to make those changes before it's too late. So Obviously, physical activity, you want to get moving, um, you want to help, it helps with blood pressure, and it helps with you controlling your blood, your blood sugar as well. We already talked about quitting smoking. That's an obvious one. It's not easy, but it's important. And then we often get asked about um, pain medications because NSAIDs, um, like Advil and Aleve, those are the common ones, um, ibuprofen, um, those are... Um, the National Kidney Foundation is not saying you cannot take an Advil when you have a headache, but um, chronic use of those, and that, again, would depend on uh, what, what is described, because I do get asked this frequently, um, what is chronic use? Um, that, again, that would depend on your risk factors for kidney disease um, and for any other um, health issues you may have. Um, but chronic use of these can actually cause major damage to your kidneys. I've actually spoken with a volunteer for the National Kidney Foundation who is 32 years old, triathlete, he basically ate wheatgrass and exercised all the time, and he was taking um, an 800 milligram ibuprofen uh, daily to manage pain from extreme exercise and some, you know, just his um, physical activity. And he did that for years, and um, it basically put him into kidney failure. So it is a real thing. We definitely want to make sure that we're monitoring chronic use of NSAIDs. Um, but pain is real too, so definitely want to encourage you to talk to your doctor about that. So obviously, this is just a slide kind of, oh, sure. Yes, like right along with your medication discussion, we have another question in chat. Um, Absolutely. So the question is, some doctors prescribe a drug called metformin to control diabetes. This drug has been associated with kidney failure. If a person has diabetes and must take medication to control symptoms, are there recommended medications that are milder? 
So absolutely, that's a great question. I get asked these frequently about a lot of different medications because we see patients um, or people who are dealing with um, daily medication. Uh, for example, I've been asked about things for, you know, a lot of people having thyroid issues and, and different medications for that because it's every day um, indefinitely. And it's the same thing you're talking about for managing um, diabetes. And I, that's, and again, it definitely goes back to having that conversation with your doctor. So um, obviously for most treatments of, of any type of chronic disease, there are going to be multiple options for um, medications. And so if you find yourself at a high risk, in a high risk category with, for several reasons, like of course with diabetes for um, kidney disease, that is definitely a conversation that you need to have with your doctor. If you, you know, when you're talking about something that's associated with kidney failure directly, and of course um, the caveat is I am not a doctor for sure. And certainly wouldn't want to make, you know, make any recommendations, but I definitely think it's a conversation that needs to be had. And so often we forget that they, that, you know, they're there for us. They, they're definitely, they work for you and, and they're there to answer your questions. And I have actually, I have a wonderful nephrologist who works with us who um, basically told me that she assumes her, as she was speaking on behalf of several of her colleagues, that if you don't ask them a question when you come in for your visit, that you already have all the information. So it's just so powerful to, uh, to know and have questions and expect answers. So I highly recommend, um, if, especially if a particular, um, what your, if the question is about a particular um, medication, that you definitely have that conversation with your physician, because I think we just assume that they um, are looking at all of that, and it definitely could be something where there might be another option. And if there isn't another option for a medication, then you need to make sure that you pop, perhaps are monitoring um, your kidney function more frequently. So we would recommend um, testing, maybe we've seen people do it every three months, every six months instead of annually. So that's what I would definitely recommend. So just to continue, I hope that answered your question, um, but just to continue on the healthy eating. Oh, did you have something else, Libby? Oh, I'm just going to thank you for answering the question. Oh, no, my pleasure. So this is just more information about healthy eating and physical activity. Again, I feel like this is definitely stuff that we already know because these are things that can help not just your kidneys, but helps with heart health. It just helps with overall wellness. Um, it can help with mood, everything. So there's just kidney disease is just a really, really good reason to go ahead and add in that physical activity and help boost your healthy eating. Because um, if in, in the beginning, I know we asked, do you know anyone on dialysis or if anybody knows anybody with kidney failure, you know it is a life interrupting disease. It is not something that you can just continue on about your way and take a pill and everything is just okay. Um, people who are on dialysis typically cannot work. They cannot, you know, maintain a, you know, everything about their diet changes, their water intake, everything changes um, when you're diagnosed with end-stage um, kidney disease. So definitely something you, you know, you want to get ahead of and prevention is key. So just to let anybody know that, um, that might be experiencing this or have concerns about it, we are actually, we have um, all these programs that are here to help. Um, there's the National Diabetes Prevention Program, the Chronic Disease self Manager Program. Um, there's all these smoking cessation resources. All these are available to help. And then when I mentioned before about the 33%, um, it's a minute for your kidneys is what we call this quiz. Um, so if you log on, if you actually click on, um, if you enter this information, so minutesforyourkidneys.com and answer the, the quiz, if you find yourself um, with one of the higher risk categories or at, at higher risk for kidney disease, um, you'll have the option um, temporarily, so it's only until supplies last. <laughs> um, but if you'll have the option to um, have a home test kit sent to you, so you can have a um, a, a home urine uh, analysis test kit sent to you, um, and then they'll they'll send those results back to you. So I definitely want to encourage anybody who is feeling um, like they might be at high risk or has concerns um, that may not be seeing a doctor regularly to please um, fill out that quiz and. And again, it, it's only, you know, how many of our kits are available. So if it's something you're concerned about, please do it quickly because we want to make sure that you're getting that information. So we are here to help, of course. Um, we do offer screenings in the community. Of course, unfortunately, because of COVID, those are on hold. But when they do come back, those are a really important part of what we do because we try to go into um, at-risk communities or underserved communities especially and make sure that they're getting um, the screening, the ACR screenings. Um, and then we would love for you to um, take this poll because we want to see if you feel like you learned anything today, if you feel like you know more um, than you did previously about kidney disease or how to prevent kidney disease. If you wouldn't mind taking that, that would be wonderful. And once again, 
Um, please share what you learned today with others. Um, I'm open to offering this um, presentation in just about any setting because we think it's really important information that needs to get out to the community. Um, and then, of course, you can learn how you can help kidney patients across the country by takekidney.org slash take action. Um, and it covers a lot of our advocacy efforts for patients. So again, that's for the quiz. It's minutesforyourkidneys.com. And then this is the closing slide. And I didn't know, Libby, if you wanted to close or if there were any other questions anybody has. Let's see if anyone has questions. I don't see any further questions in the chat. There is a poll going right now, and we'd love everyone that can to please complete that. Someone does ask if there'll be a recording of the presentation, and yes, there will. We'll um, have that recording up hopefully at some point next week, and we'll send an email to everybody um, with a link to that, to the presentation. We have just a few more minutes if you would like to work on that poll. And if you have any questions for Jill, please feel free to chat them in. I'm Libby Messiah. I'm with Alliant Quality, and I'm the angry for chronic conditions. Um, my contact information is here if you need to contact me or Jill. Um, again, we really want to thank the folks, Jill, for the National Kidney Foundation, Ed Causes, the Apex Museum, the Network for National Libraries of Medicine, who are all sponsoring this effort. Thank you for attending.